Welcome back to the Crypto World channel, everyone. My name is Josh, and right now the Bitcoin price has broken below this very important support range. But currently, the Bitcoin price is still holding above this important upwards trending support line. In just a moment, I'll be covering important prices to pay attention to in the short term. And I'll also be looking at the 11 year resistance for the Bitcoin price because right now the Bitcoin price is coming into contact with this resistance. On top of that, I'll quickly be talking about the Bitcoin order books, the Bitcoin funding rates, and the fear and greed index. At the end of the video so make sure you're sticking around all the way to the end so that you're not missing out on any of this important information and just before we jump into it make sure to drop a like on the video down below and if you're new to the channel you might as well subscribe with notifications turned on for more updates like this every single day but anyway with all of that out of the way let's get straight to what this video is about so right here we're on the bitcoin us dollar chart on the four hour time frame and what we can see here is first of all the price over the past one day approximately has now dropped below this important range of previous support which is now acting as a bit of short-term resistance for the Bitcoin price. This range is between 63 and 65,000 US dollars. And back here, this was acting as resistance. And of course, the 65K level was the previous all-time high that we set back in April. So for a short amount of time, we did breach into a brand new all-time high. But right now, Bitcoin's basically just experiencing a short-term call-off in the middle of this longer-term uptrend. And really, this is only the second pullback that Bitcoin has had within this uptrend so far. The only other one was this small pullback that we had when we hit 58,000. US dollars and we pulled back towards around 54k and short-term pullbacks like what we're experiencing right now are completely normal in the middle of an uptrend and so if anything it's actually pretty healthy that Bitcoin is getting a bit of a correction a bit of a pullback now because like I said we only had one other pullback along this uptrend so far so this is shaking out a few of those weak hands that might have FOMO'd in at the all-time high and it's definitely shaking out a few of the over leveraged long positions which I'll talk about in just a moment when we're looking at the funding rates but right now this range is technically acting as resistance and that really goes up towards 65,000. And then that $67,000 level will also act as a bit of resistance because that is now the all-time high. And there's another reason why that could be resistance and that will be in the order books that I'll talk about in just a moment. So other than those important levels to pay attention to, of course, we need to look at some support levels now in case we do dip a little bit lower. And initially we have some support coming in at just above 62,000 US dollars. But if we start breaking below that support, then the next support for Bitcoin is coming in at around 60,000 US dollars. And that is backed up with the VPVR indicator because right now we're getting just a small bounce from that volume cluster. And that volume cluster goes all the way down towards around 60,000 before it drops off quite a lot. And anything lower than 60,000, if we do break below that level, then we have huge supports kicking in for Bitcoin at around 57 to 58,000 US dollars. And that support really goes all the way down towards around 55K with this massive volume cluster right here. So to quickly summarize the short-term technical analysis for Bitcoin right now, we're currently getting squeezed between support and resistance. If we can bounce back above 65K, then that is really bullish and I'd expect at least another test towards 67,000. And obviously a break above that level would be extremely bullish. And then if we break below this initial support at around 62K, then I'd expect prices towards 60,000 and anything lower than that towards 57 to 58K. And by the way, these levels of support are potentially levels that I'll be looking at in my strategy to accumulate some more Bitcoin because in these short-term pullbacks, they make for some great buying opportunities if we are in an uptrend. And despite the short-term bearish price action that we're experiencing, we are still clearly in a very strong uptrend if you zoom out a little bit more. Now zooming all the way out to the weekly time frame for Bitcoin. This is Bitcoin's entire price history dating all the way back to 2010. And recently I've been getting a lot of comments and tweets from you guys showing concern about this 11 year resistance level. Because if you look here so far, every single time Bitcoin has reached into this red range of resistance, Bitcoin has found huge resistance so far. And right now, the Bitcoin price is approaching the top of this range. And by the way, the top of this range is coming in at around 70,000 US dollars. And so even though technically speaking, this is something to still pay attention to. As far as what I'm thinking, honestly, I'm not putting too much significance on this. And that's because of two reasons. The first reason is simply looking at these previous times that we've entered into this red range and gotten a massive rejection. And what you'll notice is the past three times that this has happened, the Bitcoin price has only quickly touched into this red range of resistance and almost immediately seen a major major rejection that happened back in 2011 that also happened in 2013 and back at the end of 2017 but what you'll notice this time around is the fact that we've actually been in this red range since the beginning of this year so nearly an entire year that the bitcoin price has been trading within this so-called range of resistance when basically every single other time the bitcoin price has pretty much been in and out straight away so that is the first sign that something like this could be losing its significance and the second thing on the chart that shows that this isn't really too significant is the fact that this indicator is not 
not even derived from the Bitcoin price at all. It's literally just a drawing on the chart. It's as good as if I drew a line like this and say that this is major resistance. And we know that this is only a drawing on the charts because if we literally look at any other Bitcoin chart that doesn't go all the way back to 2010, what we can see here, for example, on the Bitstamp chart that goes all the way back to 2011, this indicator is already flawed. The 2013 peak exceeded this resistance. Even the 2017 peak exceeded this resistance. And right now we're actually above this resistance. If you're looking on a chart that goes all the way back to 2011 instead of 2010. And then even worse, if you're looking at more of a recent chart, like the Bybit chart that only started towards the end of 2018. I mean, you don't need me to explain that this indicator isn't exactly an accurate indicator to look at. So for anyone that was sending me comments and tweets about this huge 11 year resistance for Bitcoin, honestly, this is not really something that I'm worrying about right now. Now taking a quick look at the Bitcoin order books to look at some important levels of interest. And right now we have a pretty decent sell wall at around 67,000 US dollars, which is that all time high level. So we're going to need a decent push to really get back above 67,000. But once we do, the sell orders drop off quite a lot after that. It's just really 67,000 is the main resistance level according to the order books right now, at least across these exchanges. And right now for the buy orders to the downside, there's nothing spectacular happening, but we've got a decent amount of orders coming in at 60,000, 59,000, 58,000, pretty much in $1,000 increments below 60K. And taking a quick look at the Bitcoin funding rates across all of these exchanges right now, we've actually seen a massive drop in the funding rates compared to where they were just a few days ago when we broke above the all time high. When we initially got above that $65,000 level, a lot of these funding rates were well over 0.1%, which means at that stage, it's pretty expensive to maintain a long position because of how many people are entering into long positions at that stage. But right now with the decrease in these funding rates over the past couple of days, this shows that there's been a decrease in long positions across all of these exchanges. So that short term cool off that we've had in the Bitcoin price over the past couple of days has basically forced a lot of those long positions that opened up in new all time highs to now close those long positions, which is great to see because the bigger the shakeout that we can see right now, the more people we can have FOMO in at higher prices once we break above the all time high again, which is inevitable. It's only a matter of time. So basically the lower the funding rates, the more room we have to the upside. And we're seeing a similar thing in the fear and greed index right now as well. I mentioned over the past couple of days that during a major bull market, the fear and greed index kind of loses its significance a little bit because I explained yesterday that we could actually stay in extreme greed for up to two and a half months is what we saw last time around between November and January. But with that being said, with the current short term pullback in the Bitcoin price that has now dropped the fear and greed index back into greed and out of extreme greed, which is technically giving us more room to the upside in terms of this index. And if you want to get extra updates throughout the day, make sure you follow me over on my Twitter. The link to my Twitter is in the description down below and you'll get all of this extra content that I sometimes don't even share on this channel. For example, how gold has performed against Bitcoin over the past decade and all of these other updates throughout the day. So make sure you're checking that out. And once again, the link is in the description to my official Twitter. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, you might as well subscribe with notifications turned on so that you're not missing out on any of my future updates. As always, I appreciate all of your support in the channel at the moment. I can't thank you guys enough. And just before clicking off, make sure you check out one of these uploads I have right here if you haven't already. I've got a trading tutorial video showing you how I trade Bitcoin and a passive income video showing you how I earn passive income in crypto every single day with no work required. But anyway, that's really everything I have to say for this video. I really hope you enjoyed and I'll see you all in the next video.